Hello everybody, my name is Newton. Welcome to the Beginner's Guide. This is apparently a collection of short games. That's... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Bunch of short games with a narrative to it. Make sure audio is on. Subtitles are though, so it's fine. Not my subtitles, because I can't figure out a way to do that simply. In a way that... Thank you very much for playing the Beginner's Guide. Hi. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. Oh. And the game tells a pretty absurd story. Okay. Today, I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Okay. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Okay. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. Mm. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. Okay. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. So it's and, not really uh, mostly a... Mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town... He then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder okay. that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes mm. you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want mm -hmm. us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, okay. this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. How come? In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because um, I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Um, and if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay, so my problem with this is this is someone's work that you're posting into a game that costs money. Why? That seems kind of rude. Honestly, actually seems very rude. <laughs> you, you didn't get permission to do this, so that's also a copyright issue. <laughs> You know, uh, the, what? Phone, what do you want? Uh, be right back. Okay, hopefully these episodes aren't going to be filled with tiny cuts, but, uh, I had to help my nephews. What? Um, what? Whisper Machine? Escape from Whisper. And okay. it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Code. Okay. Why? Oh. Oh, uh, it's supposed to be a fire. Okay. Evacuate immediately. Where's the escape pods? Okay, cool. Do I need it? Yeah. 
There's no hostile alien it life forms. Like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't really okay. know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. Or maybe he just did it to experiment rather than, are, rather than polish it enough to have enemies? Enemy I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Ha, <laughs> ah, nice. Ah, it's a square box. It's not a square box. It's a, the sky box is a square. And not at all blended in spherically, I guess. I don't know. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I, mm. uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. But I don't wanna skip past it. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. Okay. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay. Can I? That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. I could throw my gun into it. Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I could fire my gun enough to overheat it and then throw the gun in. But I don't have the gun anymore, so I guess I have to throw myself in. Fine. Whatevs. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced stepping into the beam and then dying okay. is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this mm. is what happens instead. Okay. What happens? Oh. You're just making me th get in the beam again? Ooh. Oh. Ah. Uh. Um. Um. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment. For uh, that's the because, yes, solution to the labyrinth. Glitch, but Coda identifies something hmm. human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or okay. this floating could be the afterlife. A peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. Okay. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this... Something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. I also think that's how game development works, is like you start with one idea and then you build off it and then whatever. Uh, I can't move. Yep. In this oh. game, you walk backwards. <laughs> nice. The past was behind her. But what was forwards of her? Huh. The wall looks a little weird on this end. It's like I'm noticing one color pattern, and then another color pattern, and then I'm seeing another one over here somewhere. Ah. Uh -huh. So but it's the a future short could not and be relatively seen. minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Hmm. Why does the future keep changing? Uh, because it's never set in stone? When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Okay. But if the future was always behind her, how will she find the strength to confront it? Ooh. By it's moonwalking. A short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. By Which moonwalking, to me that's is how why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Uh um You are now entering the poo zone? Am I approaching the poo zone? I don't want to be there. 
That's a horrible place. I'm also getting some uh, vibes and of slender. It. Okay, oh. the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. Is there going to be a now exiting one? Or is it going Often to say you're now approaching the poo zone? Titles like this one at the start I hope of not. That's weird. Oh. It's a I staircase. I wish I him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Mm. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Well, it's his projects. If this is his art form, then... Oh. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. Okay. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Probably because well, it's an art show thing. You, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay. Done. Stand on an X staring at a bear for three hours. Ooh. You know, only motivational quotes played one after the other while the player cannot move. Play a l as a loud, bodiless sound, walking around confusing people. Nice. With little ideas for games. Press U to surrender. <laughs> a button you press to stop the chaos that doesn't work. Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind that if sounds people like... thought of him as cold or distant. It sounds like Stanley he said Parable. That he knew that he was actually a vibrant There's a pair of floating eyes person, emitting footstep noises. That it takes time to really see that. That's us. It can be a very slow climb to get there. A key in one game unlocks a door in a completely separate game. What? Normal game where you scream into a mic every 15 seconds to keep playing. <laughs> so, any game that requires you to let's play it. Really? Is that it? Oh. Okay. So, what's this? I don't see any fish. I'm not seeing any fishing going on here. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Is it? Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Um. Okay, so we can't click that, and this is one. Oh. Um. And now I'm trapped. Yay. Oh, wait. Don't forget that solution okay. because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. Are we? Okay. So, in order to get through, I have to oh, to close the f front door and then open the back door. Okay. So that seems to be it, right? Eh? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Yeah. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Should it really be modifying this guy's games? Uh... Oh. Ah. Uh, that's a lot of... How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in well, the yeah. stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, yeah, that I is think beautiful. the point is the same. But most like... of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? To play the game? I don't know. To appreciate the art form? Why are you modifying the guy's games and distributing them in a compilation? Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Called it. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back, 
and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. Loading March of 2009. Oh boy. I don't think I'm ready to go back to March of 2009. The Great and Lovely Descent. Ooh. Um... Is this the Great and Lovely Descent? Let's talk about the video hill? game development for a second. Okay. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which mm. determines what the game can and cannot do. Mm. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Okay. I mean, I knew that, games, but whatever. Coda is using an engine called Source. Half-Life. Like Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Damn it. Can't go in that door. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider uh -huh. paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how it's so in the, the bathroom, bathroom that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Oh. Oh, dev textures. Oh, dev blocky textures. Just try to descend safely, if at all possible. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, certain engines do certain things well, and other and don't do other things well at all. I guess. So I'm gonna learn that very well, very soon. Particularly when I start working with a game development engine. I don't think I'm gonna be doing that as like a project for school, but I want to as like a side thing. Just to see what it's like, you know. I mean, yeah, I've played with RPG Maker, but that's something else. That's a... it's not as relevant. It's not a 3D development thing like Source. I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, I've descended safely. I've not died yet. I don't even think I can die. Um. What? Whoa! Is this a prison? Uh, what? Why? Oh, why? Why though? Why? Why? Why can I own? Why? This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Okay. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Thank you. But uh, this is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in, and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Sounds like he was sassing you. And like, maybe you shouldn't be, uh, pressuring someone who's doing this as like an abstract art piece, which very much is the case. Like, you don't tell an abstract artist to put meaning behind their abstract art, because there is meaning, it's just deeper than you think, I guess? It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Okay. Done. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I don't know. I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. 
the interpretation seems to be like to go forward sometimes you have to take a step back and then leave it behind right at least that's what I think ah uh, wait hello you there did you come up from above what Here, was up Kuda there begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities use the one two three buttons on your keyboard to respond Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? I... It's literally the last thing I did before coming here. Perfect. Now tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. Trust me, you don't want to go over there. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. You understand? This is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there's nothing I want more. Um... There doesn't have to be. I guess. What now? How did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes. Do you want to know how to solve it? No, no, we actually like the black space, find the black space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? Actually, now that you mention it, I do remember feeling strange as I passed through it. I don't think too hard about it. You'll see it again soon. I'm sure I will. Um... And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. Is it the puzzle again? No, okay. It's not. Wait, what? It's a lamp. Door closed. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going huh. to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Is it? I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, mm -hmm. and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Okay. We're gonna see it in the work as well. His games are just gonna become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. <sighs> Still not super into the whole, like, selling your old friends' games. On Steam in a compilation. This game is connected to the internet. Oh boy. Oh no, there's gonna be so much hate mail. Oh boy. Nice room. Not. Oh yeah, it's exactly what I expected. <sighs> so, first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. What? All of the notes that you see have been written by Coda. Well, this shit. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was hmm. shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So, right away, I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over enthusiastic. Huh. He was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Well, that's good. Oh, feel free to skip over any wait, of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing. Wait, 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 wait. Read all of them. Wait. I Either saw way, a flying penguin. Me, they Let me tell you, it was the most majestic thing I've ever seen. I don't feel like living because nothing will ever be as majestic as that. I never want to see anything. If nothing will ever be that beautiful again, I am now crying and plan on ripping my eyes out. I must now go now and do that. Oh. It started off beautifully and then... 
It, but they really got me in the first half, not gonna lie. Game, and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest, with you, this idea is really seductive <laughs> to me. That I could just well play well someone's played. game and see well the played. voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy. You need to go to the friggin' bathroom. Well, go to the bathroom, I could Coda. Get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always like nothing Coda here. So go much. back. Don't listen to that guy. Like I wasn't gonna. That connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely, too. I wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. Maybe I should have. You hear the chimes? They keep you going, don't they? Do they? It's not very crowded here. Bullshit. Look at all these messages. Oh my god, this room's long. Stop, turn back. Proceeding further will only result in misery. Will it? Take my hand, let's jump together. No. We can't jump the gap and we can't cross we can't jump into the hole. What? Cabbage shapes our nation. Cabbage shapes our nation. Hey, don't talk about me that way. <laughs> Apparently someone's a cabbage boy. I should be reading more of these, but I... I don't know if I want to. Don't listen to the other notes. Is this a note? I'm not safe. Oh. That's some deep shit. <sighs> I like this note mechanic. That you got going. It's about how this game is pretentious and you all suck. Stop pretending you're other people. We will all die someday. Spoilers, it doesn't mean anything. Someone's nihilistic. Devil Tower Star. That kinda sounds like a cool name for a game. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. Well, I'm here now. Yes, we're all here now. All of us. There must be a reason for it, though. His terrible secret, he kept it well. I beat the game! Did you? I don't know if you did, dude. More At room? At this level, we're going to see the puzzle <laughs> again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Okay. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Kind of what I said, yeah. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. Mm. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Mm. Wait a minute, I have an idea. Might break the game. Ah! Shit! I tried. Aha! I closed the... entirely behind me. <laughs> I didn't think that would work. That's a lot of typewriters that I'm hearing. How do you leave notes? Alright, you solved it, dude. Is that a bug? Are you there? Please say something. It could be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak! 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 That's deep. That's really deep. Ah. Ah. Porn stars die too. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay. Yeah, porn stars do die too. You know who else dies? People. By that extension, porn stars are people. 
Yeah, that that's about all I had for that. This is gorgeous art, wall art, by the way. Kinda want that. But at the same time, don't have the money for it. Um, whoa. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Okay. Except for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay. okay. Cool. Here's version two. Whoa. Oh. What furniture ought to go into the center of the room? Put a giant hole in the ground. That's not a hole. The wall of the room. Ten stoves lined up along the wall. <laughs> I think we should light up this room a bit. We'll put in live Tesla coils in each corner. Yeah. That's not a live Tesla coil. And a table! You need a table. Tables were invented in 1935. <laughs> no, they weren't. Oh. Oh. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating hmm. anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. I'm fine with that. I like weird. Weird is beautiful. So I'm okay, still waiting for those Tesla coils over. in the corners this of the room. comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hmm. Hello, please walk forward. Okay. This guide will enable you to escape from any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Make sure that you remember each step. First, click on this table. Good. Go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Put the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on. So this thing. The left side sofa, move it over a little. Finally, touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Um. Okay. I'm back, I think. <laughs> oh. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. There's also no photo frame Here's that I saw. where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Hmm. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something. Does he? And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. What does he make? This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Okay. Neither is the well. This doesn't seem like the prison game, more like the sequel to a prison game. It's like you've escaped the prison, and now you just kind of live in your life or whatever. Hello, phone box. Ooh. Um. Hello? Who is this? Hey, it's me! I'm you from after you escaped the prison! You're me? So you're tr you were trapped in this prison too? It's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. I was in the furniture maze. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking That's where I am now! Oh, I'm you know, so glad to know that I get out eventually. Are, are What's it like to escape? Himself. 
Uh, feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Do you feel any different? Sometimes I'm scared I'll get out and then things will be exactly the same as before. It actually does change. I don't feel like the same person at all. Oh, good. That's so nice to hear. It makes me feel really happy. It's still me, but I'm not, it, I'm not somehow. It's hard to describe. Wait, if you were me, then did you get a call from another person when you were trapped? Yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. What did they tell you? What did you have to do to get out? Um... They just talked to me for a while. What? That freed you? How does that work? Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Okay, I can talk. Let's just talk for a bit. Will you be here? I'll be here as long as you need. Okay. This is some deep shit. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, kinda. But do you only ever really trust yourself? So Nobody what would else? it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? Good question. Uh, I'm going to stop the video here and then uh, continue this next time. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe for more. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you to Shroud and Love you all for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you to Whirlybird, Dark Castle, and 3DS for supporting me on Twitch. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!